ஓகே ஸோ ஹாய் விரண் ஸோ டுடேஸ் கிளாஸ் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி ஆன் சேனலோபதிஸ் ஸோ அந்த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோ வீ ஆர் டிஸ்கஸ்ட் அபவுட் பீரியாடிக் பேரலிசிஸ் தட் இஸ் போத் ஹைப்போ கிளிமிக் அஸ் வெல் அஸ் ஹைப்பர் கிளிமிக் பீரியாடிக் பேரலிசிஸ் ஸோ டுடே திஸ் கோன் பி அ கண்டினியூஷன் ஆஃப் த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோ ஸோ வி கோன் பி டிஸ்கஸ் போத அதர் இம்பார்ட்டன் சேனலோபதிஸ் ஸோ ஃபார் தோஸ் ஹூ ஹேடன்ட் சீன் த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோ வில் ஜஸ்ட் ரீகேப் த இம்பார்ட்டன் சேனலோபதிஸ் So those that are going to affect the calcium channel is going to be hypokalemic periodic paralysis. Those that are going to involve the sodium channel is going to be hyperkalemic periodic paralysis and paramyotonia congenita. Those that are going to involve the potassium channel is going to be Anderson-Tawil syndrome. Anderson-Tawil syndrome. And those that are going to involve the chloride channel is going to be myotonia congenita. myotonia congenita so we had already discussed this as well as this in the previous video so we discuss about the other channelopathies in this video and i've also uploaded the notes for all the channelopathies in neuraxis pro so you can go ahead and access my content i put the link in the description and i've also put the link to my telegram group for those who want to uh, regularly discuss mcqs for dm neurology entrance exams okay so let's go into the class so first coming to paramyotonia congenita so this is a sodium channelopathy it's due to a mutation of the voltage gated sodium channel that is scn4a mcq question and like other channelopathies the inheritance is going to be autosomal dominant so as i had mentioned in the previous video most of the channelopathies are going to be autosomal dominant with the exception of becker variant of myotonia congenita which is actually autosomal recessive so now coming to the clinical features so in paramyotonia congenita you're going to have paradoxical myotonia so what is this paradoxical myotonia so first it's important to understand what is myotonia so myotonia is basically delayed relaxation after muscle contraction so usually myotonia is going to improve or is going to decrease after a period of muscle activity this is known as warm up phenomenon so in paradoxical myotonia that is in paramyotonia congenita what you're going to happen is you're going to have an opposite of this warm up phenomenon the myotonia is going to worsen with muscle activity so that's what's going to differentiate it from the typical myotonia and also it's going to worsen with cold okay so this is very very important myotonia is going to improve or decrease with muscle activity that is warm up phenomenon whereas in paradoxical myotonia it's going to worsen with muscle activity and this myotonia usually affects the orbicularis oculi the neck as well as hand muscles and other than the myotonia the patients can also develop a periodic weakness and this periodic weakness is usually very mild and it's triggered by cold okay so this is a very important question it's usually triggered by cold and it's usually very mild and like the other channelopathy patients can also develop a progressive myopathy causing inter attack weakness so come to the investigations here the serum potassium is going to be variable it can be low it can be normal or it can be high the serum creatinine kinase can be mildly elevated and the emg is going to show myotonic potentials and very very important patients are going to have reduced compound muscle action potentials on cooling of the muscle so this is very very important this is classically seen in paramyotonia congenita so remember paramyotonia congenita patients are going to have attacks of weakness that are triggered by cold patients are going to have paradoxical myotonia that worsens with muscle action okay so these two points are very very important now come to the treatment for myotonia always remember mexilatin okay the treatment of choice is going to be mexilatin cold avoidance and for patients who are going to have predominant episodic weakness thiazides and acetazolamide can be useful now coming to anderson tawil syndrome so this is a potassium channelopathy okay so again like other channelopathies it's autosomal dominant and it's because of a mutation in the inwardly rectifying potassium channel it's a cur 21 or kcn j2 gene so whenever you think of anderson tawil syndrome there are three things that should come to your mind so one is going to be cardiac arrhythmias okay one is going to be cardiac arrhythmias and the cardiac arrhythmia there are two things you got to remember the most important is going to be long qt syndrome so the most important is going to be long qt syndrome and the other one is going to be bidirectional ventricular tachycardia next periodic paralysis like the other channelopathies so patients are going to have periodic or episodic weakness and then very very important patients are also going to have dysmorphic features so always remember anderson tawil syndrome is a potassium channelopathy and three things that should always come to your mind is cardiac arrhythmias especially long qt syndrome periodic or episodic weakness and dysmorphic features okay so let's go to the clinical features so as we discussed the patients are going to have episodic weakness that are triggered by prolonged rest rest after exercise and also stress and cardiac arrhythmias very very important patients are going to have long qt syndrome this is a very very important mcq remember 
all these three features need not be present in a patient with anderson tavel syndrome. So all patients who are diagnosed to have long QT syndrome should be screened for anderson tavel syndrome. And the important arrhythmia that you should not forget is bidirectional ventricular tachycardia. So do not, different, uh, do not forget long QT and bidirectional VT. So the dysmorphic features could take the form of short stature, scoliosis, clinodactyly, hypertilorism, smaller prominent low set ears, micrognathnia, broad forehead, high arched or cleft palate. Okay, so remember these three for anderson tavel syndrome. So clinical features, uh, it's about the clinical features. Now come to the investigations. The serum creatinine kinase can be normal or just mildly elevated. Don't forget, again and again I'm mentioning this point because it's an important MCQ. ECG, you're going to have QT prolongation. So treatment is going to be acetazolamide for periodic weakness and maintain the potassium in high normal range. Okay, so try to maintain the potassium more than 4.5 with oral potassium supplements. Okay, so this is about anderson tavel syndrome. Now let's go into chloride channelopathies, that is myotonia congenita. So there are two forms of myotonia congenita. The one is the autosomal dominant form, that is Thompson disease, that usually occurs in the first decade. And then we have the autosomal recessive form. Remember, most of the channelopathies are going to be autosomal dominant. An exception to this is going to be Becker disease of myotonia congenita, which is autosomal recessive. This is an important MCQ. Okay, Becker's disease usually occurs in 10 to 14 years of age and even though it's autosomal recessive, it is the most common type of myotonia congenita. This is also an important MCQ. And as we discussed, it's a chloride channelopathy because of mutation in the chloride channel 1 gene, that is CLCN1. So what are the clinical features? As the name suggests, patients are going to have myotonia and we had already discussed this, uh, discussed this in detail earlier. Myotonia is nothing but delayed relaxation after a period of contraction. And myotonia classically is going to show warm-up phenomenon. It's going to show warm-up phenomenon. That is, the myotonia is going to improve or going to decrease after a period of muscle activity. Very, very important. Remember, in paradoxical myotonia, which is seen in paramyotonia congenita, we're going to have something op just opposite to this. The myotonia is going to worsen with the activity. But common to both is, both are worsened by cold. Both paradoxical as well as normal myotonia are going to be worsened by cold. And this myotonia, very important MCQ, is going to predominantly affect the lower limbs, that is the legs. This is why the patients are going to have a slow gait, which is labored initially, but then improves with walking because of your warm-up phenomenon. And very important, patient can also have muscle hypertrophy. So what are the causes of myotonia? So what are the important neurological conditions that can present as myotonia? So obviously, as we discussed right now, myotonia congenita, myotonia congenita, Paramyotonia congenita, hyperkalemic periodic paralysis, and myotonic dystrophy. Okay, these are the important causes of myotonia. Don't forget these important MCQ question: myotonia congenita, that is Thompson and Becker disease, paramyotonia congenita, hyperkalemic periodic paralysis, and myotonic dystrophy. Okay, now come to the investigation. So here the serum creatinine kinase is going to be normal or just mildly elevated and a very, very, very important MCQ. We're going to have myotonic discharges on the EMG, which will sound like dive bombers. Okay, so dive bombers is a type of aircraft. It's going to have a very similar sound to dive bombers. So remember, whenever you think of dive bombers in EMG, it's going to be myotonia. Okay, important MCQ question. So treatment of choice is going to be obviously mexilatin. The other drugs that you can use for myotonia is going to be phenytoin, tocanide and Procainamide and quinidine. Okay, so this is about the important channelopathies. I think I've covered most of the important points. Thank you.